Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a look at what Albedo did to the executive members of the Eight Fingers, why she has been so feared and why despite all of the tortuous experiences the Eight or rather the Seven went through, they still fought somewhat highly of Albedo. But of course before we are going to take a look at this, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel. Also I say thanks to all users of the YouTube thanks function who made one time donations. Also please 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 check out my second channel, link to it in the description. Now with that said, the plotline has been kept in the fourth season but it has been cut extremely short to the point where much of the lore was deleted and basically dealt with in one sentence or less. And it all started with Ainz and Albedo noticing that the Sorcerer Kingdom has been completely cut off from trade, which is a very big deal, for while the Sorcerer Kingdom was made up of just one city that had been reliant on external food deliveries, while the villagers could feed themselves and sustain even some additional people, and while many people just simply fled from the Sorcerer Kingdom before Einzelgon and his undead troops had arrived. The economy was still shattered, pretty much everyone who could leave, aka most people with a marketable skill, left, meaning that the production of goods, furniture to sell and steel products, all the way to magic items and the services of like banking and dining almost universally halted and every time the Sorcerer King showed up, people sought sanctuary. And while all of this happened, the Sorcerer Kingdom still needed to pay its employees, especially because at the start of all of it, the Elder Liches, that would eventually overtake the bureaucracy and the state apparatus, were still in training. And this put a great load of stress on Albedo's shoulders. Additionally, it had been shown in the 13th novel that still a fair few humans, or at least living beings, were employed by the Sorcerer Kingdom meaning that all of the wages needed to be paid, with basically no income from tolls and taxation. And even if money wasn't an issue, since the production of goods pretty much halted, since production chains were disrupted, and since no traders would dare to enter the Sorcerer Kingdom in order to sell something, the people couldn't even spend their money, even if money wasn't the problem, simply because the goods people wanted to buy were extremely limited in numbers. Now in contrast to our fine selection of great leaders around the world who would just print money to fight inflation, meet expected energy shortages by shutting down power plants, or limit the amount of fertilizer one may use or import in order to address food shortages, the Sorcerer Kingdom actually went out of its way to address the shortages themselves by trying to increase the available amounts of goods. Albedo after enduring Philippe touching her and then venting to Hilma about being touched by this thing, went to the meeting with all of the remaining branches of the Eight Fingers, because Coco Doll, the head of the slavery division, was still imprisoned, something that the other fingers envied him about, since this meant that he hasn't been baptized in the cockroach pit on the second floor, where cockroaches would repeatedly slide down one's throat and then feast on it and the intestines down below, until the victim almost dies. At which point it is simply healed and then eaten from the inside out again. This especially stressed out Hilma because she was personally responsible for everything Philippe has done thus far and still would do. And let me just say, her worries were well warranted. Oh and while Hilma and the anime still looked more or less the same, that is outfitted with two very convincing and big arguments, in the novel she alongside her fellow executive members were now very slim and had lost an unhealthy amount of weight simply due to the fact that after experiencing cockroaches eating your throat over and over again, you will develop a certain aversion to any form of dry food. And this was also something that Philippe noticed, so it was really obvious that Hilma suffered from eating disorders and problems. Now with that said, let's go back to the shortages Albedo wanted to address, 
while the Eight Fingers were now brought firmly under the Sorcerer Kingdom's control, and while they still suffered from the raid on their warehouses, the Eight Fingers still held an immense amount of influence and wealth, illustrated by the fact that Hilma could still host and help to form what amounts to a new political faction that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other two major political powers, the Royalist and the Aristocrat faction. And she was just one of seven available branches, for the slavery branch had been basically dissolved, something that also wasn't mentioned in the anime, hence why Coco Doll wasn't needed anymore, or any replacement for that matter. And with so many banks and businesses, traders and workshops under the control of the Eight Fingers, and so many noblemen and guards in their pockets, they could actually send enough traders in order to prevent any large shortages from occurring in the Sorcerer Kingdom. But furthermore, the Eight Fingers were also given skeletons. And this is kind of a huge thing, because undead labor can work 24 hours a day without getting tired or needing food, water or even air. So on one hand Albedo was able to offer something to the Eight Fingers that would greatly increase the output of goods that the Syndicate could produce. And on the other hand, they were now obligated to trade with the Sorcerer Kingdom on fair terms. And of course, to pay for the skeletal labor rented, which further increased the revenue stream for the Sorcerer Kingdom. And the Eight or rather Seven Fingers noted that it was scary how reasonable and sensible of a demand Albedo just made, and how good doing business with the Sorcerer Kingdom and its minions actually was. Now given the choice they would still try to run and hide, but all of the demonstration of the administrative skills of Albedo and his carrot and stick approach greatly highlights and exemplifies how the Sorcerer King usually does business. And lastly, Albedo gave them also the order to investigate any hint, rumor or intel about mind-controlling items in order to catch Sheltier's attackers, the one that forced Ein Solgon to fight Sheltier, something Albedo was extremely worried about and is now extremely vengeful about. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bad Guy Ye Bad Burrito 316 Bezer Ben C Brandon D Quizzy Crowley 0221 Sia Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devin Downen Ding Dong Duck Wagon Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Feral Shivan, Guy with That Head, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Janami, Jason, Chromius, Legendarius, Lelouch Free Britannia with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Normal Toad, Oakhill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Pass Sonich, Primus Eleven, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T. E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, and Zonagon. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.